Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. No one can seem to agree on what to call this piece. A hunt board, a pot board, a server, a buffet. The inspiration for this piece came from an antique original that we found in a castle over in England. I'll show you that next, and then how to build one right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. In our search this year through Great Britain for New Yankee projects, we found no shortage of tables like these, side tables that would often be found in a pantry, in a back kitchen, or even sometimes in the hallway. But of all the ones we've seen, the one in this room is my favorite, and our friend has kindly allowed me to show it to you. It's known as a fiddle leg side table because the legs are cut in the shape of a fiddle from just one inch flat stock. Now as I study this table, I notice some interesting things. First of all, this drawer is about 25 inches. This one is only 21 inches. And what that does is makes the cutouts underneath the drawers asymmetrical. Now I don't know what happened, maybe there was another section here that made it all symmetrical. But there's one thing that's really nice about it, and that's the look of the wood, which I will never be able to duplicate. These worm holes actually add value to the piece. Maybe it's the worms that got the section that we're missing. But it is perfectly sized for today's living, and I think we ought to build one. Well, what do you think of our version of the classic sideboard? I built ours from white oak. I couldn't find any wood with wormholes in it. In fact, when I went down to my hardwood outlet and asked if he had any, he looked at me like I was crazy. Now, I made ours with three drawers instead of two, and I kept the decorative cutouts under each drawer section. I copied the fiddle leg exactly from the original. But oh yeah, I added this shelf down at the bottom a pot shelf, because the original, it seemed, had very flimsy legs. They moved around a lot. By having this shelf, it'll add a lot of stability, and it'll give me more storage area. Now, if you'd like to build one of these for your home, a measured drawing and a materials list is available, and you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Now, before we get started, I also want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now over here on the workbench, I have some pieces of one inch thick oak that I'm gonna use for the legs. And I've laid out that fiddle leg cut with this poster board pattern. I could use my bandsaw to make the cuts, but since there are some fairly tight curves to cut, I'm gonna use my scroll saw. And the advantage is that with this thin blade, it'll easily cut those curves, and it leaves a relatively smooth cut. See how nice and smooth the cut is? Well, just a little bit of touch-up sanding here at the drum sander, and then we'll go on to the next step. Now, the rails are fastened to the legs with mortise and tenon joints. Now, here's a leg for this corner. There's a short mortise at the top for the upper rail. There's a longer mortise down here in the middle for this decorative rail. And on the back side, there's a mortise for the end rail. Now, all the mortises sit in a quarter of an inch from the face of the leg. And that's so that I'll end up with this nice eighth-inch reveal when it's all assembled. Now, the mortise layouts for the two center legs are identical. But for the other four corners, they're all different and those details are shown in the plan. Now I'll show you how to make the mortise. 
over here on the router table, which is set up with a half inch straight cutting bit with these indicator marks and tape to show me the leading and trailing edges of the bit because every situation is going to be a little different. For instance, on this leg, I'm going to need a short mortise up here so I can just lead into the bit, coming up to the first indicator mark, and stop. Then I need a longer mortise right in the middle of the leg. So I'm going to drop down at the trailing edge of the bit, push it through, and remove at the leading edge. There's one more mortise all along the back side of the leg. And for that one, I'm going to use my outer piece of tape, dropping down at the indicator mark, and pushing it all the way through. Now, because this white oak is so hard, I'm only going to remove about 5 sixteenths of an inch at each pass. The next thing I want to do to the legs is make a dado to receive the pot shelf. Now on these center legs, it can run all the way through. But on the corner legs, I need a stop dado because the shelf doesn't go out to the edge. Now using the same setup in the radial arm, I've made what is half of an overlapping joint. This portion on the top of the center legs, another portion cut in the top rail. Now when the two are put together, this makes a very strong joint that is going to tie the whole piece together. Now let me show you how the assembly is going to go together. Here is one of the blanks that's going to become a decorative arch under the drawers. Of course, I'll make the cutout later. But I've already formed one of the tenons, and that's meant to just slip snugly into the mortise, not too tight, not too loose. Now, to make the tenon, I'm going to start over at the radial arm, where it's still set up with a stacked dado head cutter. Now here I'm using my dovetailing saw to notch the bottom of the tenon. Now for the top of each tenon, I'm going to use my wood rasp to round it over to fit the mortise. Well, now it's back to the scroll saw to make the decorative cuts on the rails. Now, I remove the top so that I can show you the inner anatomy. Along the perimeter, all the way around, there's a dado in the back pine rail, in the end rails, and along the front rail. That dado receives this piece of pine, which holds the unit together, prevents the draw from tipping out and falling to the floor as it's opened, and also gives me a place to secure the top. You will also receive these corner brackets, which hold the unit square, and are also used to fasten the top. To make that dado, I've removed the dado head cutter from the radial arm and installed it in the table saw. It's set up for 3 quarters of an inch width and an eighth of an inch depth. Now I want to show you a couple more details. 
Along the bottom edge of the back rail, there's a rabbit, and that's to locate the draw runners. Along the front rail, there's also a rabbit, but that little ledge acts as a support for the draw runner. And it also locates it properly so that it's just a bit above the rail, so that as the draw slides in, it runs on the runner, not the rail. Now here's a glued up blank for our pot shelf. It's made up of four pieces of one by six white oak, glued and sanded nice and smooth. Now I always make the blanks a little bit wider and longer than what the final piece will be. So now's the time to true it up, first for width, by ripping a little bit off of each edge. Now I'll adjust the rip fence to the final width, which in this case is 20 and 3 quarters. Now to make the cross cuts, I'm using a straight edge clamp set square to the edges so I can guide the base plate of my small circular saw. Now with one end square, I can measure off the overall length of the pot shelf, which is 68 and a half, then put another mark back for the offset of the table saw base for the clamp, which is 3 and 13 sixteenths in this case. Look again at the prototype and note that the pot shelf is notched around all the legs. And this side cut right here has to be pretty good because you want it nice and snug. Now to make that cut, I'm going to use my dovetailing saw and go around to each leg location. I want to make a little bull nose profile on all the edges of the pot shelf. So to do that, I'm using a half inch quarter round bit, but I'm only using the bottom portion of it and this guide fence. Now to make the rest of the notch for the leg, I'm just using my handheld jigsaw. And I don't have to be too fussy with this cut because it's going to be concealed by the dado that I made in the back of the legs. Oh, well, good morning. Last night, before I left the shop, I spent some time sanding the pot shelf nice and smooth and touching up all the pieces that we had made yesterday. And I'm getting started today by completing the stop dados at the bottom of each leg. I just fit it on the pot shelf where it's going to go and trace the outline of the bullnose. I'm going to take it over to my drill press, which I've set up with a 3 8 inch Forstner bit, which will cut a nice flat bottom, and adjusted the stop so that it'll end at the portion of the dado that's already cut. Now I'm just going to nibble away the rest of the material. Now the assembly. But before we get started, I want to show you something. This situation here is a classic cross-grain situation. The grain of the leg runs up and down. The grain of the rail runs across. And I noticed that on the antique original, because they had pinned the tenon both bottom and top, that it actually split in several cases. You need to allow for some movement of the wood. So I'm only going to glue the top portion of the tenon. And I even made the mortise a little bit bigger so that this has the freedom to move. And after all, the only portion of this decorative rail that really adds strength is across the top, where we have wood running from side to side. Now
Now for the top rail. Okay, with that set in place, we'll put a clamp on it. Now I'm just putting a couple three quarter inch brads at each joint from the back side for good measure. Well, now for the back rail assembly, which is just a single pine rail. And I'm only gonna glue half of the tenon in this situation, just the top portion. Now with the front assembly back up on the workbench, I'm just gonna slip the pot board into those dados. Dry, no glue. Here I will use a little glue and some screws to secure this cleat or rail that helps support the pot shelf. All right, now for the end rails, the assembly is pretty much the same, but I'm gluing about half the length of each of the tenons. I'll just slip them into place, add the back rail, clamp it together, and pin it. Now the back rail under the pot shelf is installed the same way as the front one. And these little short rails support the ends of the pot shelf. Now I can't stress enough that we have to allow this pot board to move freely. Now the notches that I made in the pot board don't go all the way to the bottom of the dados. There's actually a little space in there so it can move in and out. And I only want to use one screw in the middle so that that movement is not restricted. And with a little plug, you'll never know that the screw is even there. Corner blocks get set in place with some glue, just slipped into the dados, and secured with a couple one-inch brads in each rail. Now the draw supports are made up of two pieces, a three-quarter inch piece and a thinner piece assembled with glue and brads. Now the draw supports are installed using a little more glue and some brads. And that takes care of the top guides. Now these holes will be used to secure the top later. First, I drill a 3 8 inch hole and then finish through with a 3 16 hole. The sloppiness of the large hole will allow the top to expand and contract freely. Now, that was the first pass to make the edge detail of the top using a half inch router bit. Now, I'll lower the bit a little bit and make the final pass. Now I'm going to replace that half inch bit with a quarter inch radius quarter round and do the bottom edge of the top. Now those screws will secure the top. Now I'm putting this band molding right around the underside of the top. And what that does is gives it a little decorative look and the illusion of thickness. Now I'm attaching it just to the base, not to the top itself. Let's take a look at one of our prototype drawers. It's made up of a plywood box and an applied front made out of the oak. And that consists of a raised panel that's trimmed in a tiny molding. I'm gonna start by making the raised panel section. So I've set up my shaper with a panel raising bit or cutter and I've mounted a blank in my miter gauge. I'll mill the ends first, then the length.
Now the molding that trims out the raised panel looks like this. And I'm gonna start out by making the large radius. And to do that, I've set up my router table with a half inch rounding over bit, and I'm gonna run this piece of blank stock through. Now I switch to a quarter inch radius round over bit to make the smaller profile. Now I'll just make one pass at the table saw to make the little rabbit. Now my molding pieces get mitered at the corners and installed with some glue and brads. Each draw consists of six components. The box is made from cabinet grade plywood, which means it has no voids or knots. The bottom is a quarter inch and all the sides are half inch thick. And after it's assembled, the oak face front gets attached. Now, I want to start by making some dados along the back of the side pieces to receive the back of the draw. Now this rabbit will receive the draw front. Now I've removed some of the chipper cutters to get my dado head down to a quarter inch width. So I can cut the grooves for the plywood bottom in the side pieces and in the front piece. Some glue and brads is all it takes to assemble the box. Now with everything square, I'll nail along the back edge. Now to make sure that each draw front is perfectly centered in the opening, I'm gonna adjust it by eye until it's even all the way around and tack it in place with a couple brads. Then I'll secure it permanently from the inside with some screws. Now all that's left is to apply the finish and find some nice brass hardware. Now the finish for our sideboard is a combination of an English walnut stain and Danish oil. Now I dusted the whole piece off completely before applying any and really just put on a liberal amount with a brush and let it soak in and dry for about eight hours before the next coat. Three coats is the minimum, but every coat you put on will make the wood look richer and protect it even more. To maintain this piece, a couple coats of wax every few months should do the job. Our English country sideboard.